What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today, well, I was actually going to be jumping into a Flame Shrine battle, seeing what type of crazy numbers we could do this week, but I kind of thought, before we do that, there's something that a lot of people don't understand when it comes to stats on a hero, and I feel like it's something worth going over, so whether we do the fights later afterwards, I don't know, we'll see, I'll do them myself if I have to, but what I want to go over are some of these stats because like some of them are you know straightforward there's other ones like skill damage precision crit damage there's things that people don't quite understand holy damage and i want to do a little clarification video because even some of you guys who know what the abilities do might not know that there's a specific cap on them so what we want to work on first is kind of just explaining skill damage and how it works so what skill damage does is it enhances number one your active skill just your active skill not your basic attacks or anything like that just your active skill and number two the second part of skill damage does it modifies your dot damage that's why Ithaqua really does great when it comes to skill damage now uh what heroes really do best with skill damage uh number one heroes that hit with a bunch of different abilities and or heroes that have a very low percent attack because essentially what's happening is uh as far as i know this is not a multiplicative number it is an additive number so you're literally taking that 570 and you're adding it on to the percent attack that you see on your hero if i'm wrong definitely leave a comment down below that's what i come to understand it is but where skill damage really shines, and this is why on a Vulcan, we run like a skill damage precision stone. You got skill damage here on Antler's Cane. You even go for the skill damage node down here. And if you're really lucky, you even get it on your awakening copy. So you guys can see why our Doom Terminator Vulcan is so strong. He's running when he's like full Antler's Cane. He's usually between about 480 and 570 skill damage. Now what that means is that's added to all these different instances of damage numbers and you can see he's got his basic attack or his, sorry his active skill basic part you have all these concentration ray hits you have the magic explosion hits you have all these things freezing pierce there's so many things that it modifies that's why you see a hero like uh vulcan and also whoops i'm in the totally wrong spot for this <laughs> so you, you see that there and you see a lot of people running a similar stone on mockman sometimes like a skill damage precision or a crit crit attack again it really just comes down to heroes that have tons of additional hits they really really do thrive when you're in that situation so this is like my full pve setup here the most skill damage you can put on a hero like doom terminator vulcan is going to be the best the second one we're going to explain is precision so precision is essentially the counter to block the higher your precision the more chance that they will not be able to block if you're going up against eloise waves in some sort of game mode higher precision is better because then they can't block and they can't do their scarred soul sacred attacks all those fun things so it's very important but there's also a hidden second part of precision that is almost more important up to, I believe the number is 150%. You essentially are getting 30% of your precision number as additional attack percentage. So in this situation here, we have 148.7. If you multiply that by 0.3, this is actually giving us 44% additional attack. So it's almost like literally having like a, an attack stone that we're completely missing out on but just in the form of precision which is why most people want to run a skill damage precision stone or a skill damage holy damage stone again holy damage we'll get to here in a minute but precision you want to try to get as close to the 150 cap as you can without going over because then it definitely feels like a wasted stat having the enemies not block an attack is just absolutely amazing so if you can get to 150 precision really important if for some reason you don't have precision on your awakening or on your stone uh, I would say I would prioritize switching this over to precision instead, getting 60% from the imprint over the skill damage one. Uh, I would highly prioritize getting to the 150 precision and then taking the time and putting the rest into skill damage when you have that room. Now, when it comes to this hero, crit chance, of course, that pretty much caps out at 100%, but crit damage has a cap as well. There's been a lot of discussions in the community where certain heroes might not have this cap, but ever since even back in the scary days, 
you notice there was a uh, crit damage cap of 150%. If you go over 150%, you're not getting any additional bonuses. So just keep that in mind. 150 should be the cap for the good majority of heroes. I know I used to read like Reddit articles about like maybe Sword Flash didn't have that cap and stuff. A safe bet is to assume uh, 150%. Now, you don't want to just go straight to 150% right here on the skill sheet because there's going to be other heroes on your team. Uh, like, for example, Queen. Uh, Queen's going to be able to, you know, affect the amount of crit damage enemies take with like Abyssal Corruption. Uh, they can get like multiple stacks on them. So you can actually get up to 48 additional crit damage. So that is something to keep in mind is like different abilities like this. They'll give additional attack and all that. Um, but yeah, it, it's it, you got to keep this in mind because you don't want to be wasting stats. You don't want to gear him for higher crit damage when you're already going to get more crit damage from other heroes in your lineup. So keep that in mind. Very important. And the last one I want to discuss is holy damage because honestly, holy damage is probably one of the biggest questions I've seen from new players since the beginning of the game to like yesterday. So what holy damage does is bonus damage and again this is going to be damage that is much better on heroes that have multiple hits and other heroes like uh oh i don't know fairy queen vessa she has a ton of additional hits with her active those things are going to really add up fast this is damage that bypasses armor damage reduction if you guys didn't know Armor reduces the damage you take from incoming attacks. The higher the armor, the more damage reduction you have. And that's beyond what you see here as the damage reduction. Like if you have a crown, it's added or it's not additive, but it's multiplicative with it, which means it's not as good, but it is going to be an amount of damage you lower. However, holy damage is a 100% bypass of the armor portion of damage reduction. Uh, that is really good. And even if you are already reducing the enemy's armor and defense and damage reduction with a Drake, this is still going to be additional bonus damage added on to your skills. Again, the more number of times you hit something, the better off you are going to be. Holy damage is amazing on these heroes, but I kind of like skill damage sometimes, depending on the hero, more so. While others, like Vesa, I prefer holy damage. So it really just comes down to what hero's uh, stats are really, really good. There are some awakening uh, things now that can like protect against certain things. You have holy armor and all that now. So it's a very good stat to have. And that is kind of why you notice Gurk making a resurgence. That's because he just gives an, a permanent increase of 25% holy damage that just keeps stacking up. Technically, if you have his... Uh, if you have him set up even higher, what, uh, V4, I think you can even get him... You can get him up to 30% holy damage. So that is a huge one. And I just want to take the time today and kind of explain that to you guys. Just so you guys understand. Because those are four of the most confused or not quite knowing what they do skills in the game and sadly there's not like a click description to see what they are so let me know what you guys think hopefully that helps clarify a bunch of things for newer players even returning players or older players that might not have actually deep dived into what they additionally do i'll see you guys next time